This class deals with McClellan's human motivation theory. David McClellan's uh, motivation theory was introduced during the 1960s. McClellan's theory is related to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Both theories are attempting to explain human motivation in the same way. Uh, Maslow saw it as a set of needs growing from very basic to self-actualization at the very top of the pyramid. And McClelland sees needs in three ways. So the two theories are related and it's important to appreciate both theories, understand both theories, because they are linked. According to McClelland, individuals possess three needs. So we'll deal with these three needs in a few moments, but for the moment the needs that we've got, or individuals have got, are based on their background, on their culture, their age, their education, their experiences. They're based on many factors. So the person, according to this view, is made up from past experiences and from culture and from the environment in which the person uh, was brought up and, and exists. So there are three types of need and which one dominates is really a function of issues associated with the person's personality and background and so on. McClelland believed that there are three main needs that are learned through social interaction with the individual's environment. So the three needs are really developed through social interaction. We know that personality can be derived from nature or from nurture according to psychology. If it's nature then it's a part of our genetic makeup. But if it's nurture, it's from our environment. It's what we learn. This is how we've been taught and influenced. And according to McClellan's view, the three main, main needs that drive motivation come from social interaction. The, the person linking to his or her environment and the environment generating these needs. Now the needs are we have a need for achievement. Individuals want to achieve so we have a need for achievement. Secondly we have a need for affiliation as McClellan called it. A need to come together, to work in groups, a need to to mix with other humans. And we have a need for power. Uh, a need to control the situation, the need to be in charge. So these are the the three needs that McClelland put forward. The effectiveness of each is only dependent on the individual. So the power of these needs depends on the individual. And also which need dominates depends on the individual. Some individuals may have a need for affiliation. They like to be work. They like to work with colleagues and friends and mix with people. Others might need power. They like the the idea of power and exercising power. McClellan suggested that each need is a motivator, and that these motivators are present in varying degrees. So we've all got the three needs, according to McClellan. We've all got the need for achievement, the need for affiliation, the need for power. It's just that some have uh, different ratings to the needs. In other words, uh, the need for power may be more dominant in some people than the other needs. Uh, the need for achievement may be very strong in yet other people and, and so on. Now, McClelland used what is called the 
thematic apperception test, TAT, to to try to work out experimentally to try and determine which need dominated and the nature of the needs. So he developed this and and looked at the test and tried to apply the test to determine which needs dominate and and the relationship between the needs in individuals. Essentially the test uh, involves showing people pictures and drawings uh, could be ink blot tests and asking them to analyze their response depending on what the response is uh, for each picture or for each uh, drawing then there is a uh, an indicator as to what type of need is is being is dominant in that person what sort of personality the person has got so there are three possibilities as I said achievement affiliation and power looking at these pictures looking at the drawings uh, the individual can then uh, indicate indirectly by describing the picture describing what has been what's been looked at they can indicate which of the three needs dominates what sort of personality they have in other words so the individual responses determine what need was most powerful within the individual and based on that then the most suitable job role for each candidate can be worked out what sort of person are they and what sort of job can they do Now the need for achievement, well, let's talk about this one, this is the first need. Individuals who acquire this need like to take on calculated risks in order to excel and achieve their goals. So need for achievement, they, they like to take on a task that's difficult, um, but it is achievable. But they like to take on the task because they want to achieve, they want to be recognized as someone who did this. These individuals like to set themselves goals that are challenging and exciting but also realistic that can be done. So they like to uh, have something which is difficult and challenging but they can do it and when they've done it they like the the applause and the the praise that they get for having achieved that particular task. Generally speaking, they like to work alone, but failing that, they will work with other achievers, people of similar dispositions, similar people to themselves, people who like to achieve. So either they'll work alone or they'll work with similar people. They will find out who is similar to themselves and they will work, work with those. Now, achievers need regular feedback as that's the only means it's the only means that they can assess their progress so achievers like to have regular feedback they they like to be told how well they're doing and what issues that they're confronting and how to solve them and they, they like discussing their work they it's a difficult task they've they've taken on and they like to discuss it so they like feedback money is a type of motivator as it allows achievers to analyze their success it could be that money and salary or bonuses or whatever uh, are linked to achievement so the more they achieve the more they get so it may be a motivator and therefore pay det uh, determines the level of achievement. That may be the case. It may also be the case that the individuals simply like being praised. They like to be recognized as the person who did something quite difficult and achieved. They don't need to be constantly praised in order to keep them motivated. Uh, generally speaking, they're self-motivated. They need to achieve for themselves. They know what they want 
and they want to achieve the task because that gives them the the honor it gives them something to be proud of uh, it it brings the the praise of colleagues and management and other people on them and they like that now the need for affiliation the second one this type of need individuals are more concerned about being liked and accepted they're worried about their image they're worried about being liked and being accepted uh, they form informal relationships within the organization there are formal organization, uh, organizations and formal groupings within the organization within companies um, production people will mix together and marketing people will mix together and accountants will mix together and so on these are uh, groupings that are determined by function but people who have a need for affiliation will seek out uh, friends wherever they can they want to be liked they want to be accepted so they have that need they like to work in a team and prefer a more cooperative environment they like teamwork they like to work together they don't like working on their own they, they need to mix mix with other individuals they're good at customer service and they're good in team situations customer service they like to be liked even by the customers it may be answering the telephone about returns but they want to be liked working in a team they want to be a part of the team they want to contribute to the team they adopt the the spirit of the team they like it the next need is the need for power this type of need is associated with individuals who like to take control and lead others they can be very argumentative and very strong opinions they're trying to push across their views and get their views accepted they don't give up easily so these people have have a need to lead and to control they may be suited for leadership roles as they like to dominate and be competitive so the organization will see someone who's strong in charge of that particular section or department however the downside is that they may not instill a lot of motivation in the workers the workers may not be motivated they they're not consulted and if they are consulted their their opinions are ignored so this type of person uh, comes to the fore because he or she likes power they like to control so cooperation with the workforce and collaboration with the workforce is not a part of this uh, this need the motivator can be divided into two parts uh, there's an institutional part individuals like to organize they just simply like to organize the department they see the department they think it could be organized better they want to take control and they want to coordinate members of a group in order to reach organizational goals they want to organize people um, to achieve the goals that they're setting so they have a they have a need to be involved with institutional organization but they've also got personal power they, they feel that they've got a right to control others um, they don't really take others feelings into account they they feel that their their views should be accepted and everyone should understand the views and and agree with them 
because their views they see as the best. They're the best views. So they have personal power. Generally it's an ineffective method. It's not a good method because um, others do have feelings and others do have other uh, ways of doing things and others have experiences and uh, and their opinions matter as well. But the person who has got a need for power may not see that. They may they may simply think that their views are the best and therefore they want to almost bully across, bully their views into practice. Now applying the theory, well people possess, diff possess different needs therefore they need to be motivated differently. Well we've seen three different types of need so people need to be motivated differently according to the needs. So it's important to recognize which needs are dominant in in people and try to fulfill those needs. Managers need to be capable of identifying individual needs and how they should motivate each individual. Managers should be aware of the three needs and see if they can allocate the person to a situation which will maximize their interest in work, their productivity, their application because they're working in a situation where their needs are being met, their affiliation needs, their power needs, um, or their achievement. They just like to achieve. So managers should try to recognize this in the workforce. High need for achievers. Well, it's important that the work for achievers uh, the work is challenging, but it should be realistic. It should be achievable. So it should be challenging but achievable. And they like to be uh, have feedback. They like to be uh, told how well they're doing or or what issues they're confronting or are likely to confront and how to deal with them. They like discussion. They like to be um, to be dealt with because uh, they're out to achieve. And money is not the main motivator. Perhaps feedback and recognition and praise is more valuable. So not necessarily the case that money is the most important motivator for these people, the people who want to achieve. And they like to be grouped with other high achievers. They like to be seen as having done the same as other high achievers, people who were recognized for their achievements in the past. They like to be seen in that light. Now for affiliation, well, affiliation, they, these people perform best in groups. They're friendly and they like a cooperative environment. They like people working together. They don't like to take on challenging tasks. They prefer manageable tasks, tasks that can be done they're not very challenging, but they're meeting their need of mixing with others and having relationships at work in the sense of uh, collaborating with getting the project done or uh, discussing ways of improving the the workflow, or um, but also forming a, a little social group, being able to talk about what was on television the night before and talk about sport and. So they're, they're meeting a need for affiliation. They prefer personal feedback rather than constructive feedback. They like to be to spoken to in a friendly manner. They like to be dealt with in a friendly manner. They like to be praised in private rather than in front of people. It's embarrassing to be praised in front of their colleagues and, and also it may alienate them within their their group. So they want to be praised in private. They, they prefer that. Now for the need for power, well, provide leadership roles wherever possible for these individuals because uh, these these people are ambitious. They're, they're, they want power. They want to be able to control the situation. They want to be able to control people. 
uh, they're not happy unless they're doing it. So it's important that the organization finds some outlet for them to exercise this, uh, this power. It should be done carefully because um, they, they can cause problems amongst the other workers who may see them as almost bullying their points of view across by uh, forcing others to accept their views and by controlling them in a way in which they don't want to be controlled. They are very competitive and goal-oriented. They want to achieve, so they're very competitive. But they do prefer direct feedback. They prefer to be told exactly how well they're doing or uh, what criticisms there are of what they're suggesting. And they will argue against the criticisms because most of the time they are convinced that what they're doing is correct and they will not move from that position easily. They like career development opportunities. They like to become head of department or um, become a manager responsible for some, some part of the organization. They like the status and the power. Uh, they're caught up in, in all of that. That's what drives them. Now the conclusion. Well, McClellan's theory is useful in helping managers identify how they can mot motivate individuals to perform best. If it's possible to identify the type of person it is, achievers, affiliators, if they're into power, if we can group them into one of those three headings then there's a, a better way of dealing with people. The manager knows what sort of person they are and, and what sort of conditions they like to work under. And according to McClelland, all individuals possess the three needs. Uh, however, one of the three are always more dominant. So one of the three is dominant, but everyone has got the the desire to be liked, to affiliate. Everyone's got the uh, the desire to achieve, and everyone's got power to some extent. The desire for power. It's just that in some people, one of these will dominate according to McClelland. That completes this class on the human motivation theory as put forward by David McClelland. Um, that's, that's all I'm going to uh, do on this session so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.